we go. Um, Ralph Leroux contacted me about uh, 15 months ago and said, I'm interested in virtual work. And I see that you do work with virtual teams. How about we start a group? We started a group of researchers. There's about 15 of us around the world. We meet in Second Life once a week. Um, and uh, we called the thing Be There because uh, for better than being there. Let me tell you a little bit about the Be There Coalition. There's people like Ralph who've done application development, people like me who work in teams and virtual work. We have a lot of people with human factors background. And just like this group, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that do marketing and branding and want to understand how to use virtual worlds for that. We meet in Second Life, but it's not that we're Second Life converts. We just have a common vision, and that's a good place to meet. Our vision is that we'll, there will be online 3D workplaces in the future where people can share this collaborative environment, much like um, collaboration technologies, but in an immersive environment, and bring context to collaboration, because so much now in the 2D workspace, you don't have that. Some sample applications are virtual meetings. This is a screenshot from a technology called Tixio, which combines your, your groupware stuff of video teleconferencing, text chat, application sharing, and the virtual world a la Second Life into one application. Um, another application would be virtual conferences. Why actually travel to the conference when you can attend virtually? Um, there was a very large conference in Second Life in May, the e-learning conference, which gathered 1,300 educators together. Homeland Security has done a conference as well in Second Life looking using um, NOAA's islands. Um, another application are virtual offices. So um, this is just some samples from Second Life. BBC has um, a virtual bureau in Second Life. IBM has invested over $10 million in Second Life and is really putting, they're going to build their own 3D intranet. Um, and of course, you can have virtual meetings. But the thing I think is important about virtual spaces is that they provide informal collaboration spaces that you get at the office. So when you're standing around the coffee machine, when you're just overhearing someone's conversation, that's where you can really pick up some good lessons learned and knowledge. And so informal virtual water cooler type spaces, I think, is one very important application. Of course, training is very important, and it's being used. Um, 3D worlds are being used for training. Um, this is an example of training cu customer service representatives. And down here, we have a Homeland Security um, example built in Second Life on an island for doing um, response to attacks and stuff like that. Um, Second Life is also getting, so you get, it's much more beautiful and realistic. They're doing photo sensitive wraparound in the virtual world where they actually take actual photos. So one application is to just have by your desk an ability to go see some exotic port of call. But we're not there yet. We need technical requirements. Um, these pictures on the left are actually avatars that are very photorealistic. Right now in Second Life, they're very cartoony and they don't look good enough for a business application. So we have the photos over here. These were done by the University of Central Florida and University of Illinois Chicago. Another problem that we, don't, that we have in virtual worlds is the ability to read people's micro expressions, which are very important for how we read people's emotions. This is examples of Paul Ekman and the importance of micro expressions. And it won't be until we have cameras on us that can read those micro expressions that we'll have that in the virtual world. We also need to improve the user interface of these virtual worlds. I don't know about you guys, but I walk into walls a lot in Second Life. So in Japan, they're doing a lot of, of work on improving the haptic display with virtual worlds. And um, the people at Electric Sheep just built a new viewer. Um, also, you need enhanced multimedia. Fifteen months ago, they didn't have voice in Second Life. Now they do, and if you're talking, you get this nice little uh, green bob, ball above your head so you know who's talking. You get directional sound. Um, but we still need the ability to capture what's going on in the virtual world and play it back. The, what we envision is being able, with the low cost of displays, having wraparound displays and being able to um, have your applications open on your screen as well as your virtual office so that everything is somewhat integrated and you can and live in this environment as a new workspace and take it with you. There are some other technology besides Second Life I just wanted to mention so we can discuss it later. Um, Croquet is an open source software that allows you to develop 3D worlds quite easily and uh, we've taken a look at that. Here's 
sharing annotations about an object. Here's writing a blog within the world. There's also technology called Quack and a product called Quack Forums, which is a much higher resolution. You can see this is like a museum built in a Quack Forum, where you could take a classroom and discuss items that are that are in the museum. You can also see basically web-based browsers and have integrated applications. So why virtual worlds for work? Well, telecommuting is on the rise. Uh, 4.5 million people in the U.S. telecommute at least once a month and 45 million or 4.5 million do it every day and 4, 45 million at least once a month. People are sharing office spaces so they don't have to commute. Um, some other trends are the increase in virtual teams, outsourcing, the fact that the gamer generation is, is growing up and they, they were weaned on video games. And of course, we all want to protect the environment and thinking about the global world and not wanting to uh, burn too much uh, carbon and gasoline. So what does this mean for our future? I mean, I do believe that these virtual worlds, not in the state they are now, but with enhanced technology, will change the way that we live and work in the environment. I was a big uh, reader of Snow Crash a long time ago and always <laughs> liked the idea of having an immersive virtual world, and I don't think it's quite there yet. So finally, what do you think? Where do you think this technology is going? Um, what do you think is still lacking in order to make it work for you? And uh, see, I did it all in six minutes and 40 seconds, <laughs> and none of you fell asleep. So, woo! Hey. There we go. Uh, <laughs> not a single eye turn on the